Oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? This is literally one of the hardest puzzles I've ever done in my life. This is not normal. This is not healthy. Do not do this. Most people would not find this fun. everybody, welcome back to Karen Puzzles. Today, I am taking on the puzzler. But wait, that's not all. I am also taking on the puzzler too. So you might be wondering, what is the puzzler? It is a jigsaw puzzle of a jigsaw puzzle. So back in the 80s, the Springbok released these puzzles where the design is of different colored puzzle pieces, like right next to each other, but the cut of the puzzle are like random shapes on top of that pattern. So for Christmas, my sister got me the Puzzler 2, which is the second version of this puzzle that they released. And, you know, when I saw that, I was like, was there a Puzzler 1? There had to have been a Puzzler 1. So I went on eBay and I bought myself the Puzzler 1. But I'm going to, you know, attempt to do both of them in this video. I'm actually really nervous. I think these are gonna be really hard, but the shirt that I'm wearing says, this is terrible, keep going. It is a My Favorite Murder shirt that my sister got me for Christmas as well. And, um, I feel like that just encapsulates the entire process of putting together these puzzles. All right, let's let's open it up. Oh, I'm so nervous. This is gonna be so hard. I'm really intimidated. All right, let's take a look at the Puzzler One. Now, I managed to get this one um, still brand new, shrink wrapped. There had been a sticker here. I think it says an authentic interlocking circular. Probably just said like, it's an authentic Springbok puzzle. And it looks like there might've been a price. Maybe that's a five, five dollars and 59 cents. I can't really tell, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Oh, there it is. My gosh, this front cover is actually so bright and saturated. This is beautiful printing. And I've also never seen a Springbok box like brand new like this. It is so nice. <laughs> so up here in the corner, it says the world's first circular jigsaw puzzle of a jigsaw puzzle. It's mind boggling. That it is. If we take a look at the side, it just says the puzzler. And then this is the kind of standard language that's on all of the Springbok boxes. It is over 500 pieces. Thank God it is not like a thousand piece puzzle. That would have been impossible. And then here's what the back looks like. I'm not gonna read it because it's kind of silly, but you can um, pause the video and you can read it for yourself if you want to. It's actually very funny, but I just love that they felt the need to give instructions for, you know, a regular 2D puzzle. All right, let's open it up. Ah, let's see what the pieces look like. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? So I've never, I don't think, done a Springbok puzzle brand new, like without somebody else having done it before me and then just boxed up the pieces. And there's actually a lot of puzzle dust. I guess with the previous ones I've done, that's all been knocked off from the first person who did it. But yeah, there's a lot of dust going on here. Oh, there are also a few handfuls of pieces that are already together. Should I, typically I would take those apart, should, I just go ahead and leave them because this puzzle is already gonna be so hard. Maybe I should take all the help I'm given. So if we take a look at one of the pieces, um, you know, Springbok puzzles from the 80s are super, super thick. Just look at how thick that cardboard is. Sure enough, you can see the pattern that we're working with. It really just looks like a random assortment of 
colors on each piece. And to make it even more confusing, this is a random cut puzzle. So there are a handful of pieces that are your typical puzzle piece shape, but actually I'm gonna flip these over so that you can see the, the piece shapes more easily. But then there are a bunch that are just totally wild, totally out there. And these little guys, Springbok puzzles, um, at least these vintage ones always have these. And some of them are edge pieces and then some of them are just floating around in the middle. So they do have false edges and tiny edges, which definitely makes it very, very difficult. All right, you know what? I, I took on this challenge, I committed to this, so I'm going to take apart all of these pieces that were already stuck together. I'm doing it, I've already done it, I can't go back now. Okay, so what is my strategy? Number one, I'm going to sort out all of the edges and you can kind of tell which pieces are definitely edges because, especially since it's a round puzzle, because they'll have long curved edges that you can see pretty easily. And then I'm also going to sort out all of the pieces with tiny short edges um, because these might be edge pieces, I just don't know. All right, there was just a guy with a leaf blower outside for like five minutes, so I don't even remember what I was saying, but <laughs> I'm gonna sort out the edges and the potential little edges and then try to put those together. And then I have two ideas for my strategy to do the middle, but I think I will tell you those once we get there. So let's, let's just get started. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just finished the sorting. Look at how wild this is. So obviously over there are all of the inside pieces. I'm not even dealing with those yet. I'll get to that soon. Down here, you can see we have a lot of pieces with the long curved edge. And then look how many pieces have teeny tiny little straight sections that could be edge pieces, but we don't know. I kind of um, underestimated how many of those there would be. So I think I'm gonna move all of those over to this side of the table, work on the edge, grab pieces from there as I need them. And then hopefully I can finish the edge pretty soon. And I don't know, get a feel for it. We'll see. All right, so I just finished the edge. That actually wasn't as bad as I thought. I didn't actually end up using that many of these little pieces. Most of it is, you know, the edge pieces that I had pulled. So it went together fairly quickly. One thing that I noticed is that since all of these little pieces all have two outs on both ends. If I came across a point where I had an out and I needed to find an in piece, I could be pretty confident that that was in the other pieces that I had already pulled. Whereas if I had an in piece and I was looking for an out piece, there were so many more options because I didn't know if I was gonna be pulling it from these little pieces over here. So if I got stuck on a piece where I needed an in, I would just move on to a different piece. But if I had one where I needed an out, no, other way around, you know what I mean, then I, <laughs> Okay, I think I think you get it. Also, I even though, you know, these are puzzle piece shapes that are making up this texture, since they're so broken up, I kind of don't even see them as puzzle piece shapes. Like it really just looks like a random colorful texture. So they could kind of be any shape at all and it would still, you know, be about the same type of puzzle. Okay, so my two strategies that I had in mind, 
Number one is kind of what you would like typically think to do with a puzzle with an all over, like very similar texture, which is to just pick a spot, find that piece and then work your way out. Basically you're finding one spot where you need a piece and then you find that piece and then you find the next spot where you need a piece and then you find that piece and you just keep doing that until you've finished the puzzle. This is not typically the most efficient way to do a puzzle. You know, typically you'll want to sort the pieces so that you're pulling from a smaller pool of pieces. So my other idea was to pick one color. I'm thinking like blue since it kind of stands out the most out of all of the other colors and try to put together all of the blue pieces to kind of give me spots to work out from and then from there just fill in the rest of the pieces to connect all of them. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is kind of a combination of both strategies. I'm going to sort of use the blue pieces as my like homing angle. <laughs> So I'm going to try to start from maybe like the blue pieces on the edge and fill those in, but then I'm sure that there will be pieces near them that I'll just kind of randomly put in as I need them. So I guess I just need to get back to it. The edge actually wasn't that bad, but oh, now there are so many more pieces to be pulling from. <laughs> Well, that took way too long, but I just put in my first piece and it doesn't even lock into place. It just kind of sits there. So this is a funny looking thing. Maybe I can find that next. All right, so I'm about three hours into working on the puzzle and you can see how little I've gotten done. And actually when filming it, rather than just letting the camera run while I work, I've been turning the camera off and then looking for the next piece that I need and then turning it back on to put the piece in because otherwise I would have had hours of footage of literally nothing happening, of me just staring at the pieces, like looking for the next piece. My strategy ended up just being the, the one of, you know, finding the next spot that I'm looking for, trying to find that piece, and then moving on to the next spot that I'm looking for, trying to find that piece. So as I said, not the most efficient, but the further along I get, the easier it's going to be. Because right now, you know, for every single spot that I'm looking at, I have all of these pieces that I have to look through and decide if they fit there or not. And then when we get to the point where I have like 30 pieces left, that's a lot less to look at. So they'll just go in way faster. The exact same thing happened when I did the David Dobrik QR code puzzle recently. I didn't do a video about it and I put up an Instagram post with all of my thoughts on the product, which you, well, you, you can read the post if you want to know what I thought, <laughs> but it was kind of a similar puzzle in that it was just one, you know, pattern all the way across the puzzle. So when I was working on that one, the first third of the puzzle took me four hours. And then from there, finishing the entire rest of the puzzle only took me two hours. And even like the last third of the puzzle was probably about 20 minutes. So I'm hopeful that the exact same thing will happen here where the further along I go, the faster and faster the pieces will go in. One change that I am going to make now that I actually have some pieces in and I have a little more space here is I'm just gonna line up the pieces in more of an organized grid just so that it's easier to see the shape of each individual piece because when they're all scattered everywhere, your brain has to kind of flip it 
to, to see if it'll fit into the spot that you need. And I can't sort the pieces by piece type because they're all totally random and I don't know what piece type I'm even looking for. But if I can organize them into rows, it'll just be a little easier to see them and find what I'm looking for. Also, one thing that um, kind of surprised me is that I am much less stressed while working on this puzzle than I was with like any of the puzzles that I did last year. And there's a very good reason for that. Um, last year I was working another job where I was kind of on other people's schedules and so I would have to work on these hard puzzles and then try to finish in time to like get back to work at my other job or like take a break and go do something for my other job. Whereas now, now that I have quit that job and I'm only doing this today, I'm just kind of like, it takes as long as it takes. If I'm here until 8 p.m., that's fine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm much more zen about the puzzle um, this year than I was last year. All right, time to get back to it. Oh my god, you guys, it is 4.30. I've been working for another three and a half hours straight through, and look how much more I've done. <laughs> this is so hard. This is literally one of the hardest puzzles I've ever done in my life. I can tell that it is starting to get slightly easier. I'm like starting to find pieces a little bit faster, but I keep just getting stuck for like you know, five or 10 minutes at a time, not putting in a single piece. <laughs> and everything that you just saw must have looked so easy because I'm only filming like when I find a piece, but trust me, there, there are like spans of full minutes in between each one of those shots of me just literally like sitting here staring at the pieces. I feel like once I get maybe halfway then it'll start moving a little faster and I wanted to get some nice close-ups of like putting in the pieces, but I just wanted to wait until I was putting them in a little bit faster. I just keep waiting for it to kind of break and like move into, you know, becoming easier and I'm just not there yet. And I've literally been working on this all day. Remember when I wanted to do um, both of these puzzles for this video? We'll see what happens, we'll, we'll see, I don't know. I mean, I'll give it a few more hours today. I wanted to finish it today, but I don't know. All right, it is 6.30. I have been working on this for literally all day, and let me show you how much I've gotten done. Or should I say how little? Like, look at this. This is a full day's worth of work. That is wild. But as I said, I think that as I get closer to the end, it'll go a lot faster. It's already starting to go faster than it was at the very beginning. So I'm going to call it a night. I'll be back tomorrow. It's actually so hard to tear myself away from this, even though I've been working on it literally all day. I keep being like, just one more piece. Just one, okay, just one, okay, this'll be the last piece. All right, just one more piece. <laughs> but I am in the middle of a Buffy marathon. I'm up to the season three episode, Band Candy. So that's what I'm gonna go do now. I'm actually really hungry. So yeah, I'm gonna have dinner, gonna watch some Buffy, and I'll be back tomorrow to finish this. Good morning, everybody. It is a new day in the workroom, the puzzle room. I slept really well last night, so I'm feeling so confident that I can finish this this morning. It's just about 9 a.m. now, so I'm hopeful that I can finish it by noon because I do have other things to do in my life. <laughs> but before I started filming this morning, I actually resorted all of the pieces. So let me show you what we're working with now. Just as a reminder, that is the progress that I've made on the puzzle. 
So over here on this side, we have all these little guys. So we have the ones with a flat top and bottom. Then we have the ones with a flat bottom and then normal looking outs on the three sides. And then we have the ones with these like curvy bits on the sides and they are broken out by which direction the curvy bit is going in. And then over on this side, I actually realized there were a fair amount of traditional puzzle piece shapes. So I broke those out. We have the four ins, we have the, I mean, you can see, I don't have to describe them. So those are up top there. And then at the bottom, these are all that we have of the kind of random piece shapes. So that is much more like doable and approachable than when everything was all mixed together. So I'm going to get back to it. I feel like once I get to just like a little bit left and I'm putting in pieces um, more quickly, I'm going to hop back on to tell you a little bit more about what my strategy has been. But let me just get a few more pieces in first. So I'll be back to check in in a little bit. You guys, I'm almost done. Look at how few pieces I have left. It is 11.20, so as I said, I should be on track to finish it well before noon. But now that it's moving a little faster, I thought that I might just show you a little bit of what my strategy has been. So as I said before, it kind of doesn't even matter that these are puzzle piece shapes because you know, when they're so broken up, you can't even see the puzzle piece shapes. Those only appear once you have a lot of pieces together. You know, these could be like circles or hearts or literally any repeating pattern with the colors evenly distributed and it would be exactly the same level of difficulty. So what I do is for each piece that I'm looking for, like let's take this one right in the corner. I'll look at that and I'll be like, all right, I need an out that's mostly yellow with a little bit of green on the tip and then some orange, blue, and yellow on the other out. And since a lot of these pieces are kind of random, you know, I don't know what's happening up here, but I know that it has these two outs with a little corner between them. So that means it could be one of these pieces or it could be one of these pieces. And of course I have to look at my random pieces because all kinds of stuff is mixed in there. So I actually already found it. It is going to be this piece. You can see the little green tip there. That's what gave it away. So if I try it in place, it fits. So now I move on to the next piece, which I know has this tab that is mostly purple or it's purple on the edge and it has some, some yellow. So I have not actually um, spotted this one yet, but let me take a look. And I keep like looking back and forth to try to find any other clues, like I can see here, it might have some green in it. It has some blue up at the top. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing would it be if I was filming this and I just like couldn't find this piece. <laughs> oh, I just spotted it. So this is a little tricky one because the tab is not forming, you know, a full puzzle piece shape. It's actually just half of it, which is something that Springbok does quite a lot. So you can see that fits right in there. So yeah, I just continue doing that until I finish the puzzle. And now that I have so few pieces left, it goes way faster because there are fewer pieces to look at and try to spot the like color um, patterns that I'm looking for. So I should be able to finish this in like, I don't know, the next 15 minutes or so. See, and this is the part where it really gets fun because you know, there aren't that many pieces to be looking at. And it's so satisfying to see a puzzle that you've worked on for a long time to just finish it off. Oh my God, I can't believe it. The very last piece. Oh, 
Well, <laughs> I finished it. What a relief. I was kind of worried that I would be here all day for a second day, but it only took me two and a half hours this morning to get from the halfway point to finishing it. So you can see that my theory was correct. You know, it was like eight hours or something yesterday to get from starting it to like halfway done. And then it was way less time to get to, you know, almost done. And then it was like 15 minutes to put in the last little bit. But this was definitely a huge challenge. Um, if you know someone who has done every single puzzle in the world and they're looking for something to really, really test them, this is a very good one because, you know, for a 500 piece puzzle to take me a day and a half, you know that it's really hard. So since this is a Springbok puzzle and they have really interesting piece cuts, I thought that maybe I could flip it over and we could just take a look at some of them. Just admire the work of the Springbok puzzle designers. All right, I managed to flip it over without getting pieces everywhere, which a little worried about. So if I zoom in, this center part gave me a lot of trouble and you can see how cleverly they used kind of weird random shapes that don't necessarily look like they be belong in the center. One of the things with circular puzzles is that pretty often you can tell like what the center is and what the first few rows outside of that are because they cut those pieces smaller and then they get bigger towards the outside. But with this puzzle, pretty much every piece is a, you know, the same size. There are small and big pieces all throughout and each one has about the same wedge shape, like whether it is right in the middle or all the way on the outside. They also do a lot with like cutting these um, in shapes in half. So this looks like it could be a fairly typical puzzle piece shape. But you can see here how it's actually two pieces and this part gets cut in half. So you can't necessarily see that, you know, when they're separate pieces. Over here, this whole setup is like very clever. You can see there are a lot of pretty traditional piece shapes mixed in there, but then you have these tiny little guys in there and then these weird fellows like kind of filling in all of the space around the, the typical puzzle piece shapes. All right, was that enough? <laughs> Very nerdy puzzle talk for everyone. Let me flip it back over. So now that I have done the puzzler, maybe it's time that we take a look at the puzzler too. Am I gonna do this one too? Am I gonna subject myself to it again? Well, let's just take a little breather and then I'll open up this box. All right, so I'm not actually gonna start this puzzle today. Um, I just feel like I need a little bit of a break from it, but let's just take a look at the box, take a look at the pieces. So the main difference that I can see is that this puzzle is an octagon shape while the other one was a circle. I love this little tagline that they have on the front here. <laughs> just when you thought it was safe to work a jigsaw puzzle again. So here is what the two sides look like compared to each other. Um, pretty much exactly the same, just like a couple slight differences. Apparently the second one is in the Grand Master series. I don't know what that means. And then if we look on the covers, um, this original box, it I don't know if this is because it was in the shrink wrap, maybe this one was exposed to light, but the colors are much, much brighter and more vibrant on the original box. You can also see that, let me zoom in, you can see that the shapes are pretty much just, um, it's almost like a cartoon, like each shape is just one color, there's no dimension, and it is exactly like that on the puzzle as well. Whereas on the second box, you can see that there's actually a slight highlight and shadow on all of the pieces. So I'll have to see if that is, you know, on the pieces as well, or if that's just an effect that they put on the cover. If we look at the back of the box, this one has um, a little poem similar to the 
a doll puzzle that I did a while back. And you actually have to like put the pieces together in your mind to read the last few lines of the poem. So you can go ahead and pause that if you want to read the whole thing. So if we open it up, let's see what's in here. We have uh, the pieces, which are still sealed in the original bag. For some reason, I thought this had already been opened, but it is still, the pieces are still sealed, which means that I most probably will not be missing a piece, which I was a little worried about. We also have these catalogs and there she is. There's my creepy doll puzzle. <laughs> also, I guess that's a difference between the original puzzle and the second one is that in the original one, it was shrink wrapped and then the pieces were just loose in the box. Whereas I guess by the time they came out with the second one, they had started putting the pieces into bags in the box. How, how do I not have scissors within arm's reach? I have like 800 pairs of scissors in this apartment. <laughs> All right, I've got my scissors. So I'm just gonna carefully cut this open. And okay, my immediate impressions, this is so much darker and more dull than the original puzzle. Like what happened? If anything, I would have assumed that the second one would be brighter and more exciting, but it's, it's pretty dull. Also the highlights that I saw on the front of the box are definitely on the pieces as well. So that actually might be a little bit more of a clue because then you can tell you know, that they're all going in the same direction because the highlight is on the same side of the piece all the way across the board. So that might make it a little bit easier. But besides that, I'm seeing, you know, a lot of the same types of pieces. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of straight edges instead of curved edges, which makes sense because it's an octagon and not a circle. So I'm going to just take a little break from the puzzlers, but I'll be back in a few days and I'm going to give this one a go because it was a gift from my sister. I can't, you know, buy myself another version of the same gift and then not do the original gift. <laughs> All right, everyone, it is a few days later and I am back at it with the puzzler too. So you can see that I've already done a lot of the sorting and I have started on the edge and I wanted to get an entire segment of the octagon edge finished before I like showed you guys so that you can see like how big it's gonna be. So this time I decided to do a lot of the sorting from the beginning. So you can see down here we have um, the three pronged ones, and then we have the two different versions of this one, and then we have all of these little guys. And then I need to rearrange a lot of this, but you can see that we have all the random shapes and then all of the more traditional shapes up here, and then just a random pile of more random shapes that I didn't have room for that I still need to um, lay down over on the other side. But let me show you something new that I've discovered. So this puzzle seems to have these kind of double in and outs, which I didn't see on the first puzzle. So that is a new development. Also this corner, you can see that there's not really anything crazy happening there. It's just the angles coming together in such a way that it makes the octagon corner. Here's another one that's a little more simple than the one that I just showed you. So, so far I haven't had any problems at all. I think doing it twice, um, I've learned a lot from the first one. So hopefully it'll go together a lot more quickly. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half and you can see I have the edge finished and I have everything sorted. So the edge is done, everything is nice and organized, um, except for all of this. These are, this is the overflow of all of the random pieces. So as I start putting some of these in, um, these pieces can like move down and it'll look a little nicer. So you might be wondering when you're working on a puzzle like this, like how do you even start? because obviously there's not a ton of information on the edges. So what I did is I just looked down this line and I realized that this spot, it has a knob that is fully blue. And I thought that would be pretty easy to spot. So I looked all around and you know, there's this one, but the knob isn't quite big enough. There's this one, again, it's a little small. And then finally I spotted this guy and 
I think, I think we've got our first piece. So now we have this little tab here, which should be fairly easy to spot. We have a nice flat section here, so that'll probably be somewhere around here. So just finding like one very distinct piece now gives me a lot more information to work off of. problem. So I started working on this at like 10 a.m., maybe a little after. I took a little bit of a lunch break and it is now 8 p.m. and I literally just worked straight through. Like, this is not normal. This is not healthy. Do not do this. I don't know what is wrong with me that I just cannot tear myself away from my puzzles. But here is what I've gotten up to. So there are few enough pieces left that Tomorrow I should easily finish it off and I'll have better light to finish it off in. Um, right now I'm having a lot of trouble telling the greens and the blues apart as well as the reds and the oranges. So it's been a bit of a struggle, but it's actually been really fun. You know, I had a great day, <laughs> but I am so hungry. I really need to eat and sleep and do basic human things besides working on jigsaw puzzles. So I'll be back tomorrow to finish it up. All right, it is a new day and hopefully this will be the last day that I ever have to work on a puzzle or puzzle again. I mean, I say that, but I am actually like really enjoying it. I mean, you can you saw how long I worked on it yesterday. I wouldn't force myself to do that if I wasn't like actually having fun, which is so crazy. Most people would not find this fun, but <laughs> I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, just like the first one, I think that I can finish off this last like third of the puzzle in two hours or so. Let me pull out my phone and show you. There is this one little part of the puzzle that I have been having so much trouble with. Here it is. You can see it's literally right on the edge on the corner that's closest to me. So I've been trying to fill this in since the beginning of the puzzle. This little tab here with a little spot of yellow in the corner. And I literally just can't find anything that matches that shape and the colors. It is literally driving me crazy. As I was going to bed last night, I was trying to, like, as I was falling asleep, my brain was brainstorming like different ways that this could potentially be broken up, like broken in half. It has literally taken over my brain. So I will update you once I figure out, um, you know, what goes in there. <laughs> Oh my God, I think I just spotted this piece. I think it is this guy right here. I don't know how I didn't see it earlier, but let's try it out. Ah, it fits. <laughs> I think this is what tripped me up because I was expecting it to be, you know, this guy to be like a full on one of these, but because we have this kind of half curve there, it kind of hides it, so. Yes, now I can finish filling in this little section. Looks like we've got a little guy in here. And then that one should be very easy to find because I only have six left in this shape. So here it is. Oh my God. This is like as exciting as finishing the puzzle because that spot had been bugging me for so long.
Oh my god, you guys! I finished it, but I'm missing a piece! How did this happen? Wasn't the bag still originally sealed when I opened it? Like, I've already looked on the floor, I haven't spotted it. Here's the box, so let me like check inside. It's not there. I found the original bag, which was still just on the floor and it's not in here i mean it's a small piece so there's a chance it's on the floor and i just can't spot it so i guess i need to just crawl around on my hands and knees for a few minutes <laughs> but i mean besides that i finished it and it's only 10 20 which means that it only took me an hour and 20 minutes to finish it after the point that you saw this morning so that's an achievement. Just kind of ruined by the fact that I can't find that one piece. <laughs> Like some of the ones that I just talked about that I did over Christmas, those are relatively easy. So I just kind of go into autopilot, just putting in the pieces one after the other. It's a good way to just like turn off your brain, you know, focus on a podcast, but just give your hands something to do. But with these, every single piece that you're putting in is hard work. Like, it takes so much brain power for your brain to look at these pieces with little, like, splotches of color all over them and have to rotate them in your head and think about what's gonna fit in, and then with the random piece cut, have to use, like, the little bit of information that you have and just see what piece out of so many different options could potentially fit. I really enjoyed them. I mean, it was a lot of work, but you know, there have been some puzzles that I've done on this channel, <clears throat> the crypt puzzle, that just seemed like difficult for the sake of being difficult, where it just kind of felt like a little boring to me. But these, it's just like constantly engaging your brain and I had a great time with them. I never felt like totally stuck or totally frustrated, even if it took a while to find each individual piece, like at the beginning when it would take five or ten minutes to find each piece, like, my brain was still being engaged and I still felt like I was making progress. This is definitely one of those puzzles, though, where you'll, like, have a spot that you're stuck on and you're just like, I swear that piece is not on the table, it does not exist, and then five minutes later you're, like, looking for a different piece and then suddenly the piece that you needed is literally right in front of you and you're like, how did I not see that before? So, since I did both of these, I am in the unique position to tell you which one I recommend over the other. And I'm gonna go with the original Puzzler, I think is superior. The colors are a lot brighter, and I think that it just looks cleaner not having the highlights and shadows on the pieces. Also, if we take a look at two of the pieces next to each other from each puzzle, you can see that the original Puzzler, um, the edges are a lot more crisp. And it's not because either one has been done before or like handled before, as you saw, both were brand new. So it's as if for this first one, when they were cutting it, they were able to slice really cleanly through. Whereas for the second one, it almost looks like the pieces are slightly torn apart. Like the edges are a lot more rough. And so the second one is actually the same piece quality as all of the other Springbok puzzles that I've done, where it's really thick, it's a really tight fit. When you're finished, you can literally pick the entire thing up, which sounds good in theory, but there was a lot more of like adjusting the pieces as I was going, and the pieces didn't seem to fit quite as cleanly into each other. Meanwhile, over on the original Puzzler, uh, you can't pick the entire thing up. The pieces are a little more loose, but it just feels really like clean and crisp to put in each piece. So I know the other thing that you're all wondering is, 
did I ever find that piece? And the answer is no. I mean, I'll keep you updated on Instagram if I ever come across it, but I swear I have looked all over this room and this puzzle has not left this room since I opened it, so I don't know where it could be. Maybe when this was originally packaged up, like 35 years ago, maybe it's just been missing this whole time. Who knows? Luckily, I am not somebody who gets really hung up on a missing piece. Like, for me, the value is in putting together the puzzle. It's not in staring at the finished thing, so I honestly don't even care that the piece is missing. <laughs> so I would love to know in a comment, have you ever done either of these puzzles? I know that I have a few people watching who have told me that they bought these puzzles back in the 80s when they were brand new, which I think is amazing, and I'm so happy that so many years later, like, we can still get these and experience them. Do you think that this is a puzzle that you would want to try to tackle, or would you stick with more traditional jigsaw puzzles? I will say, like, now that they're done and I'm looking at them, even just trying to look at the finished puzzle, it it's so hard to look at. It's like your brain doesn't know how to make sense of two sets of jigsaw puzzle piece cuts on top of each other. This is literally like breaking my brain trying to make sense of it. All right, your code word for the comments will be um, mind boggling. <laughs> I think that'll be fun, right? <laughs> and then I'll know that you watched all the way to the end of this very long video. What can I say? These are some of the most interesting puzzles that I've done recently, so I had a lot to say about them. All right, I feel like I need a nap after spending so many hours on both of these puzzles, but thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.